unrest. And it's not a happy word in the Dutch language. It's actually a reference to a mutiny that happens in 1613 on the island of Manhattan or in the waters around it. But we have to back up to Europe to get the beginning of the story. Uh, our hero is a guy named Adrian Bloch. He's a sailor from the city of Amsterdam back in the Netherlands, which is a pretty new country in the early 1600s. The Dutch won their independence from Spain during the 1500s and as a young European power with colonial aspirations, they're sending sailors to all corners of the globe to explore, to discover, and to make a buck. Because the Dutch are merchants at heart and they want to engage in some activity that's going to at least cover the costs for these expensive exploration uh, activities. Something else that's going on in Europe is that it's kind of cold. Apparently it's sort of a mini ice age in the early 1600s and the winters are very cold and the nobility are crying out for a particular product that's hard to find in Europe, fur hats, fur hats and coats. And the best place to get furs at this time is over here in the New World in the New Netherlands territory because this place is just crawling with beavers and mink and otter and all kinds of furry critters that you can turn into a fur hat. Big business at the time. So our hero, Bloch, is a, again a well-known sailor from the city of Amsterdam. He's hired by a private trading company from that town to go across the Atlantic and engage in fur trade, fur trading with the native population that lived around here. They outfit Block with two boats. They're called the Tiger and the Fortune. Rawr, tigers. Um, there's a lion on the bow of the boat, and the Dutch love that kind of imagery. Uh, but the Tiger and the Fortune were bigger boats than this one. They were designed to cross the Atlantic. They had two masts and had a deeper keel. You could carry more stuff, more sailors. So they cross the Atlantic on these two boats. Block is in charge of the Tiger. He's got another guy named Chris, uh, Cornelius Hendrickson on board the Fortune. They arrive in the city, the future city, of New Amsterdam, which today, of course, we all know is called New York. But the Dutch called it New Amsterdam, and it was their base of operations. They were in that area before other European powers were. And they had a couple little camps established, so there's sort of a light Dutch pres persistent presence in Manhattan and the Hudson River area in the early 1600s. But I'm talking about just little camps, canvas tents, maybe some stakes in the ground to sort of fortify these places, but not a ton of stuff. Uh, when they get into New Amsterdam Harbor, they see another Dutch boat there. They all wave high but they're not happy to see each other because they are in competition. These expeditions are privately funded with private investors who don't want competition. And the sailors don't want competition either. Your pay as a sailor is based on your profit for the voyage. Your profit may have just gone downhill because of uh, the lack of um, beaver skins when you arrive in a village that's already traded with your competitor and, and that kind of thing. Just We're going backwards right now, it's pretty cool. But So if you were sailing in 1600 and you wanted to go this way, what would we do if we were going backwards? Anybody? Row. Rowing is a good answer, but you know, you might just kill yourself staying in the same position. There's one other thing boats have. Put it on t-shirts, tattoos. Anchors. Anchors! You just drop your anchor and you wait until the tide turns around. And then you can go this way. Um, there's a lot of patience involved in this early exploration. When they're on a river like this, you're probably at anchor over half the time. Probably three quarters of the time. Not to mention you're exploring and making charts and meeting people, so you're not in a rush to travel. You can, I believe, go all the way to Hartford by raising and lowering your anchor. It's going to take you a week or more to get there, but the incoming tide will advance you to the north when it's really flowing in and you pick your anchor up when it's coming in.
when the tide turns and you start going backwards, you drop it back in the water. And hopefully you don't run into a rock or a sandbar while you're doing this. If you have sweeps, oars, if you have a sail, you can add those things to a mix to improve your ability to move. Um, you can go ahead and start the engine. 